Hello and welcome to Swissnext India. Today's video is all about the exciting world of fintech in India. Like in many other places, fintech has been rapidly growing here and has impacted consumers' lives in a large manner. One individual that has been actively involved in um, the fintech space in India is Lizzie Chapman and I'm very happy to have her here as our guest today to talk about this. Lizzie is the co-founder of Zest Money and has before worked with fintech companies in India and also international companies coming here. Lizzie, it is a pleasure to have you Thank here today. You. Same. Right, Lizzie, so in discussions about fintech, it's not usually India that comes up as you know, the first place that mm. people think about. Um, why should international entrepreneurs still be excited about this place? Yeah, so obviously I'm biased. Um, I think this is the most exciting fintech market in the world. Uh, never before have we seen such a huge population coming online so quickly, all at the same time, and predominantly via the medium of mobile. So mobile internet is probably the fastest growing in India versus any other market in the world. And that creates unique opportunities for fintech businesses and products. Um, and what I mean by that is the way that we use data and connectivity in this market will create some really revolutionary products that can't even be imagined in the rest of the world. Yeah, it sounds quite unique and amazing and really doesn't sound like a place that you could compare to any other places. You've mentioned it already a bit with the mobile, yeah. um, mobile first, um, but what could you say that makes the fintech, in, mm -hmm. fintech space in India special? So specifically, there's a few things, um, probably three big things that we focus on. Uh, one is obviously this growing young demographic, so a population of consumers who are very keen to try new products and services and have recently been focusing on the new user experiences of the digital economy. So these consumers are very used to using uh, the mobile interfaces that we use every day in our e-commerce and travel and shopping lives. And this means they expect the same level of digital user interface from their financial services products, which banks are not yet ready to provide. This means they'll adopt new products, particularly in the payment space, very, very quickly and easily. Um, and that makes releasing new products into this market a very satisfying experience. So that's number one. Number two is that this is a market where banks have been quite slow to adopt technology. And for a variety of reasons, basically linked to infrastructure and distribution, it's very challenging for a large bank to distribute financial products to the mass market. Again, that creates a huge opportunity for people who can use technology to find solutions um, for smaller distribution. So we see massive potential in digital payments um, and ways of distributing financial services products that don't require a physical interface. And then finally, I'd say the third really exciting development in this market, uh, which is probably under, under expected, uh, but we think over the next 10 years will really take off, um, is the UID database, so the ADA uh, development, which is part of the India Stack Initiative uh, from the government to biometrically tag every single consumer in this country. So now over 1 billion Indian people effectively have a biometric social security number. And there's no other country on the planet where that many people um, can be digitally authenticated. That creates the most enormous range of financial services applications uh, that are really only just beginning to be developed. So the timing is great. We think now is, uh, is the right time to come and build these products for a market that's suddenly ready um, and an infrastructure that's suddenly very accommodating. So we've heard a bit about now what makes fintech in India specifically special, but obviously we want to think about the global level a bit as well. So Lizzie, do you have any idea or any opinion? Do you think fintech from India in India can disrupt the global ecosystem as well? Mm, absolutely. It's a cliche, but I think if you can make a product work in India, you can make it work anywhere. There are some very unique challenges to this market, um, things like language. Over nearly 30 languages are spoken in India. So if you can adapt a product for that diversity, uh, you have a good chance in the global market. Um, this is also, as I guess most people know, a low-income market, right? So the average consumer's spending power is extremely low, which means you have to create products that have very thin margin but wide distribution. 
Uh, and again, that has great application to many, many other markets across Asia and Africa um, if it can be done successfully. So you've said it yourself, if you can make something work in India, you can <laughs> make it work anyway. But obviously you yourself moved to India from London and, mm -hmm. you know, initially to support the expansion of an international company and then starting your own business here. Um, obviously, things are never that easy. Could you share a bit more about what were your biggest challenges mm. doing that? Yeah, sure. This is definitely a challenging market. Um, don't be fooled that it isn't. Um, we came first originally uh, with my, my earlier company in 2011. And in those days, mobile internet didn't really exist, honestly, or it was very <laughs> rudimentary. Um, banks were in the dark ages and the concepts that we were talking about and the ideas that we were suggesting were, were quite shocking to most of the service providers that we met with. So um, very, very difficult to get buy-in from the ecosystem. That's changed a lot, uh, but there still remain some very, very unique challenges to this market. And I would say um, that probably we have one of the most progressive regulators in the world when it comes to financial services, which is a positive, um, but the speed at which they can change the reality on the ground is, is relatively slow. So as an entrepreneur or as a product developer in this market, you have to have a lot of energy and a lot of enthusiasm and keep pushing the boundaries. Thank you. And so pushing the boundaries is one thing one may take away. Are there any other lessons you mm. like? experiences that you would like to share with? Sure, yeah, lots. Uh, I could write a book. So I think that the really important thing in India is to never take no for an answer. Um, things are not always what they seem. So keep asking the same questions, keep uh, pushing forward, and don't be scared to be at the forefront of change. You'll be surprised how quickly things can change. Um, we also believe that having a global perspective is really valuable here. Uh, lots of particularly seasoned bankers will say, this is the way things are, you know, accept, accept. And if you come with a perspective from a different market, you can use that evidence to persuade and challenge their old-fashioned opinions. Um, and that's been really, really valuable for me in getting things done and making change. Amazing. And, I mean, we're talking about change, so obviously we're thinking a bit about the future. Where do you see in the future lying the biggest opportunities for fintech? Mm, so many, many places in India, I think. Um, maybe I'll just uh, pick on one or two that are really exciting to us. So, uh, number one is the whole concept around credit. Um, this is a market where probably less than 50 million people have actually taken a formal loan. So, very, very, very small penetration of formal credit. And that's partly because there have not been good credit scoring mechanisms. So the credit bureaus and the authentication mechanisms that we have in the rest of the world are very, very early in India. But that creates a huge opportunity for anyone who can use alternative data sources to make credit decisions, uh, which is something that we're working on. Um, so I think that's a big, big, big opportunity. The other uh, specific opportunities are in things like hardware for authentication of, of people. Um, we find here that because human labor has traditionally been quite cheap, people have not developed the hardware and software that we have in other markets to do things like OCR, facial recognition, uh, biometric authentication. But these are all going to be huge, huge markets over the next 10 years. And so uh, we would definitely encourage uh, foreign uh, providers of these services to look at India as an exciting market. All right, so we hear the future is bright for fintech in India. Thank you so much, Lizzie, for Thank coming you. here and answering a few questions. Thank you.